Hey up troops, it's A Littleton here again with another video. And this time we're gonna be Oh. It's not ideal, is it? Here to take this gun, look down that scope and tell me if you can see me. Hang on. You got it? There we go. That's miles better, isn't it? Now you can probably tell this time we're gonna be looking at glass. Now I said on the thumbnail, glass rework, and that isn't clickbait. It hasn't been a direct rework as such. But over the last two or three or maybe even four seasons, there's been changes to Glaz, which eventually has resulted in it being a rework, essentially. He's had more bullets in his rifle. He's become a three speed, which is super important and helpful for him. He's also been given a bearing nine, a gone six, and all sorts of different changes that for me does constitute in calling it a rework, really. With his current loadout, which we'll get into in a second, I feel like Glaz ticks a lot of boxes and he gets a bit overlooked because he's been out of the meta for so long. But I actually think Glass is alright these days now. And, you know, he's not going to be a must-pick on every ranked game. But I think you can have some fun with him. Maybe a bit more in casual or unranked. There's definitely some places in ranked where he's a useful operator to take. This smoke's lasted quite a while, hasn't it? Don't worry about that. It's enough waffling. Let's get stuck into it. Right, so let's get started with Glazzy's loadout then. And there is a really, really good conversation to be had here about numerous things. However... You don't get much of a choice with Glazzy's primary. You've got to use the OTS or Glazzy's DMR, as everybody calls it. However, moving down onto the secondary, this is where the conversation starts, and obviously the secondary gadget as well. The PPM is arguably the best pistol in the game, but I still don't think it's viable to take over a Gon 6 or a Barry 9, which Glaz has just recently been given access to. The Barry 9 is an absolutely top alternative for close quarter gunfights if you're playing Glaz instead of using that DMR, because even, I mean, this is unbelievable at range. However, up close and personal, the Bearing 9 is probably going to uh, going to win you the fight more often than the, the OTS. However, the Gon 6 is going to enable you to clear utility. So what do you do? Do you, do you try and stay at range and clear utility? Or do you take the nades to clear utility and not take the Gon 6? Just moving down onto the secondary gadget, you've got smokes and frag grenades. Now, frag grenades are, are massively in the meta at the minute in Siege. However, one of Glazzy's main abilities is his scope can see through smokes, which we'll come on to shortly. The thermal side of his, of his scope means he can see through smokes. So I personally still take smokes because it gives you that ability to, to, try and, um, to try and see players through smoke. But nades are just unbelievably good at the minute. Up nading is, is like the, the flavor of the month at the minute in Siege. I'm, I'm getting killed through floors with grenades all the time. So it's a real tough one. I don't think Glazzy's role is to start clearing utility with Gone Sixes. It's helpful if you do that for your team, but... I mean, I could be here all day talking about the, the benefits and, the, and the, the pros and cons. But for me, I take his DMR, of course, and then I take the Bearing 9 and Smokes. But if you were to say to me, I play Glass and I take a Gon 6 and a Frag Grenades, I wouldn't be like, well, that's the wrong thing to do. Because I, I can see both roles. You can be like an entry fragger with the DMR, the Gon 6 and the Nades. Or you can be a bit more passive and a bit more support-ish with um, support-ish. I've just made a word up there, but we're rolling with it. Uh, we can take the DMR, the bearing if it needs to, to get all close and personal on the smoke. So I think you can probably fill a couple of different roles. But yeah, for me, DMR, bearing nine, smokes for now. So starting with the basics here in Garage, in case you can't tell, smoke's just there. He's pretty well camouflaged against that uh, that wooden background there. But you have the, the standard sort of one-time scope, whatever it is you choose to use, whatever scope he says. If you then press the gadget button, flicks the magnifier across, and this then creates a four-time zoom on the scope and also becomes thermal. Now, we're going to flick to the left in a second and see smoke. This is what it looks like normally. If you look at smoke now, he's now highlighted in yellow, nice and easy to see. And as you can see as well, by the way, the holographic site reticle is kept. So whatever reticle it is you use, whether it's the uh, the Russian holographic or the red dot C, is really nice with this scope, actually, because it's just a clean dot in the middle. But I think the hollow looks nice on this scope. It's really easy to see. Um, it's a really clean reticle. Um, so yeah, it keeps the same reticle, whatever you use. Um, and that's it. Yeah, that's the basics of, of Glazzy's gun. It turns the enemies yellow, and there's a bit more detail about how long they stay yellow for, which we'll get onto now. Okay, so getting into the details of how Glazzy's thermal scope works. If we zoom in on smoke here, you can see there's a bright luminous yellow, and he's he's really sort of poignant in the in the scope there. If you look down the sides of the scope, you'll see five yellow bars. Now Glazzy's um, thermal ability is based on movement. The more you move, the less yellow the enemies appear. It'll never be completely zero, but it will it will slowly fade. And that is indicated by those five yellow bars down each side of the scope there. So if I move around, you'll start seeing those bars fade. And you may not notice it at first, but smoke is becoming less yellow, if that makes sense. Now, all five bars are going to disappear in just a sec. There we go. Now, if I carry on moving, smoke is still pretty obviously yellow, right? And you may think, I don't think that's different to when we first started. 
But if I stop moving, it'll charge back up and you'll see how much more yellow smoke becomes. It's quite a drastic change. So if we stop moving now, you can see that I, it didn't think, I, I don't think it's that different. And then you stop moving, it charges back up and you think, bloody hell, wow, that is, that is quite a difference there. So that's how it works. It's based on movement. Now, if you can see, the more you move, the bars go down and then it slowly gets less and less on smoke there. That's how it works. In terms of timings, I'm going to be honest, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's if you move. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's about nine seconds. There we go. We've just figured it out. Nowhere can we find that out unless anyone's got an official source. Um, so if you move for about nine seconds, the, uh, the thermal um, brightness, if you will, sort of slowly fades. When you stop, it charges back up within almost an instant. So that's enough maths and counting for now. The other ability that the glass has, which is really, really useful, and probably his, his main ability, is not only does this thermal scope work in general as it does now, we can also see through smokes. So if we throw a smoke on the ground here, and we cut off the line of sight between us and smoke, as you can see without the reticle on, it's just the smoke. We put that back on, and all of a sudden, we can see through smoke. That works no matter where you are within the smoke. Obviously, it will also still fade as you move around. But one thing I will just demonstrate now, even through smoke, the yellow brightness will never become zero. So there we see smoke. I'll start moving now. It's starting to fade. But even when those yellow bars down each side of the scope are zero, like now, you can still see them. It is still yellow. Granted, it's less. We stop moving and it charges back up. So even in smoke, it will never be zero on the sort of... Um, the charged up yellow thermal effect. I don't know the best way to explain that, but I think you know what I mean. So even through smoke, yeah, the thermal effect works. And also, even when you're moving and those yellow bars either side of the scope get to zero, you can still see through the smoke a little bit. Obviously not as much as what you can do to start with. So just another point of note quickly, unlike Warden, who can see through smokes as well as flashes, if I try and use the other PC to throw a flashbang on the floor here, you'll see that Glass, when he's in his thermal scope, is not immune to flashbangs. I think that's a pretty bright way of showing you, but you can see there that regardless of whether he's in his scope or not, he still gets affected by flashbangs, so don't think it's Light Warden who can see through smoke and flash, it's just the smoke he can see through. So just a couple of points of note when it comes to your teammates. For some reason, the scope knows who teammates are, and your teammates do not appear that yellow colour that we saw smoke appearing as in Garage. The thermal scope doesn't work with the teammates to make them turn yellow. However, if a teammate throws a smoke on the ground, just like we're doing with thermite here now. The thermal scope will still work so you can see through the smoke, so you can still see thermite there. He's just not yellow. So if you see yellow, make sure you shoot. However, what I will say is with any teammate, if there is an enemy and it's still a teammate smoke, if there's still an enemy in the vicinity, it doesn't have to be glasses smoke or, or anything like that. If it's a teammate smoke, you can still see the teammate through the smoke, uh, but the enemies will be yellow even if it's a teammate smoke grenade. So we've timed this video really well with the introduction of Sense to Siege this season. Sense's light wheel, green curtain, whatever you want to call it, um, acts much like a smoke grenade in game and Glass reacts to the light curtain much like a smoke grenade as well. So when Sense throws it onto the floor, um, Glass can see straight through it and see the enemies in that yellow color on the other side. And much like smokes, teammates will be visible, but they won't be yellow. So if I throw this on the floor and move to the other side quickly, if we then ADS on this, as you can see, we can see through the light curtain perfectly. Teammates don't appear yellow, they appear the normal colour, but if that was an, anim uh, an animal, what? If that was an enemy, they'd be bright yellow, much like they were in smoke. So there's actually a couple of drone holes that you can really make good use of with glass. This one here on Clubhouse, next to the CCTV breach, we know someone's going to be holding top red almost every time. The key to doing this, though, is you've got to make sure that no one's on rafters anymore. You've got to make sure you've cleared rafters out, otherwise when you swing the breach here, you're going to get absolutely domed from, uh, from rafters. However, to get the guy on top red, you can smoke off the drone hole. And as the, the smoke pops there, you can then, it's completely clear to top red. However, young Glaz here can see the Alice. So as you're here, you come across, you can see the Alice top red. Obviously, Alice's point of view here, she absolutely can't see you. But it's a really good drone hole to be able to swing and take control of top red actually hit the aller. Obviously, I didn't want to hit the aller there because the game, the round would have been over. Um, so, just want to let you know that, you know, I wanted to. I definitely could have done there, but I, that was definitely my decision. I didn't just miss that by accident there. So, yeah, that's drone all one that could be useful. <laughs> so, this drone all works really well if you want to push the backside on a downstairs consulate attack. First things first, open the barricade leads into Visa. 
You've then got a drone hole just here. And then you're going to drop the hatch, but you're going to cut off the line of sight from cafe right to the back of the hatch. So you honestly, you've got to make sure visa's clear. You can drone out underneath if you want to, but if you smoke the drone hole... We've already opened the barricade. You can then open the hatch. And you can drop, and the line of sight to cafe is then blocked with the smoke. Except, if you've got the, the old thermal scope that Glass has here... You can see right the way down there. It, what you'll find is if someone hears that hatch open, they'll come and hold the long angle here and just try and watch the drop. But if it's smoked through, this is the drone all here. When you throw it through, it bounces off this, lands on the floor here. And when you drop that line of sight all the way to cafe from the hatch, is gone. However, it's still smoked, so you can see it. If someone's peeking to see if anyone anything's going on there, obviously there you go with the uh, with the thermal scope. Another good drone hole slash smoke peek is on Villa here. We're on the uh, sort of master balcony, bathroom balcony. What you need to do is get rid of this case that's in the way. Of the drone hole. Does take a few rounds to get rid of, but it will go eventually. There you go. Now, when you smoke this drone hole, you can then jump through bathroom window and peek into Astro. Through the smoke, however, it will be, will be smoked off, obviously. Oh, I haven't thrown it very well. Let's see if that still works. It might still uh, be okay. Yeah, it is okay. Ideally, the smoke will land here and it'll cover the whole thing. But yeah, you jump through bathroom window. We can now peek Astro. There's Valk. She can't see us. We can see her. But it's a really common peek um, from Astro to be holding there. Let's try and get it through a bit further this time. Maybe we go prone. That's better. So he covers the whole door this time. So yeah, you jump into bathroom. Just hold a bit of an angle here. There's the Valk. So you normally have a smoke plane behind a shield there as well. You can also see down onto the Astro stairs if need be. Remember, try not to move too much so the thermal scope stays as bright as it can, but another good drone all peak to use with glass. So I did a couple of gameplay examples like we've done in the past here with glass. And this one here, attacking border on top floor. This is a really good site to play glass. You can peek around onto the half wall really well. Drone behind you, first of all. Make sure you're not getting flanked from CC. Open up the door. we got the smoke around the corner. And have a look at what you can see. I can hear that there's someone tight left on the wall there. I don't know if you can hear that in the video, but you can hear the footsteps tight left. We've just seen the Azami dagger on the wall there. So we know someone's tight left, and we know that Azami's probably half wall. Another smoke, so we can peek the smoke. Hopefully they peek back through the smoke. Yeah, you see the Azami prone. And that's the Azami gone there. We still heard that person tight left, and it's a pulse. I don't know what the pulse is doing. But there you go, that's attacking the border. So this one isn't really using smokes, this is just to show you how much easier you can see enemies through the thermal scope than they can see you. A classic angle on cafe looking up to uh, a heaven balcony there. You can see what a thing looks like a legion. It's so easy to see. So there we have it, that sums up Glaz. Again, as I said earlier on, it's not an operator that's ever going to be a must pick, but certainly someone that does a job in pretty niche circumstances at the moment. And there is a place in the meta for him I feel these days. I never normally ask for the subscription and say, please sub to the channel, like and comment, etc. But if you do like the video, I am going to, even though I just said I don't ask for it, I am going to now. So if you did like the video, do me a favor, hit subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything and it makes me day. Like and stick a comment in there about something or other. I don't know, ask me a question, I'll answer it for you. Um, but yeah, any engagement with the video is massively appreciated. Thank you. For those of you that don't know, I say this every time, but for, <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone does know by now. But for those of you that don't know, stream on Twitch four days a week, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 p.m. UK time. There's been a load of you from YouTube. Go over there. It'd be good to see a few more. So get yourself over there. So that's it from me on this one. I'll see you next time. Cheers.